know, you've probably seen it before, but you may not know what it is. This invasive species can cause headaches for property owners as it is quick to take over yards and forests. Take a good look at it. Mm -hmm. We are talking, of course, about buckthorn, and autumn is an ideal time of the year to try to get rid of it. And here to share some of his expertise with us is University of Minnesota researcher Mike Schuster. Mike, thanks for coming in this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. We were just talking all things buckthorn in the break uh, because it is a problem. It's a growing problem. And for people who aren't familiar with it, you are if you've got it in your property. But what is invasive buckthorn? Yeah, so we have two different types of invasive buckthorn in Minnesota. We have glossy buckthorn, which is probably a little less common. It has really shiny leaves, grows to be about 20 feet tall. Um, the more prolific version of buckthorn is common buckthorn. That's what you had on the screen there. Um, and that is an invasive plant from Europe that was brought over as a hedge plant. And those same traits that make it a really great hedge make it just totally take over natural systems. Right. And I'm guessing that that must be the problem, that it just takes over systems and kind of crowds out maybe important, uh, you know, elements in the environment and other for other plant species. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, buckthorn tends to dominate natural systems, meaning that it pushes out native plants, but also native animals that we would normally want to have in those systems. As a consequence, we don't get as much value from those areas, uh, particularly the forests. Uh, but we also have you know, lower uh, erosion control, and buckthorn also tends to host uh, important agricultural pests like soybean aphid uh, or oat rust. So there's consequences for invasion, whether you want to use forests for recreation or for uh, you know, economic timber harvesting or just for you know, having clean water. The big question people are thinking, how do I get rid of it? Um, we know now this time of year is actually a pretty good time to start doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So as we get further into the fall, more and more native trees are going to be losing their leaves. Uh, the wildflowers, grasses are turning brown. Uh, but buckthorn, it keeps its leaves green well into uh, the late fall or early winter. And so it's really easy to spot right now. Uh, and so it's easy to remove in that way. But you're also reducing the amount of damage that you do to native plants by acting now as opposed to the summer when they're trying to grow. Okay, and I would think just by the name buckthorn that it's, uh, it's sticky. It, it maybe is, is hard to remove. So how do you make sure that the buckthorn doesn't come back while you're removing? And in many different ways you can, you can try that, right? Yeah, and so that really is the, the biggest issue. Um, we have lots of different mechanical and chemical methods that we can use to kill buckthorn. Um, but what's really important to remember is whenever you remove it, it has a tendency to come back, whether resprouting from uh, cut stems or coming from uh, you know, the seed bank, from seeds that have been dispersed. Both of those require a long-term plan of at least a few years where you have to go back, retreat with whatever method you're using, or ideally establish some sort of competition of native plants uh, to keep those uh, returning buckthorn small. And we saw the goats munching on it. We know they like to mm -hmm. eat it. And they're great. They're great at getting rid of it. But you are working on, you and fellow researchers mm -hmm. are working on a buckthorn right now. Bring us up to speed. Any new developments? Yeah, so uh, my group looks primarily at what we do after we do that initial uh, removal attempt. So whether we're using goats or chainsaws, whatever we're doing, how do we get to stay gone? Um, and what we do is look at how uh, native plants can be used in this aspect. We can simultaneously restore native biodiversity and uh, reduce the amount of invasion that's occurring. We tend to see that uh, whether we're seeding in native grasses or you know, taking a more aggressive approach of planting trees and shrubs, that we're seeing reduced invasion as a consequence. But really the best results uh, are yielded by doing that more aggressive approach of planting trees and shrubs like elderberry or mm -hmm. uh, sugar maple or fir. Got it. All right. All Good right. information Mike because Schuster. we, if you've got buckthorn, you're not a happy camper. Yeah. yeah. Mike Schuster from the uh, Minnesota uh, Invasive Terrestrial Plant and Pest Center yes. at the University yeah. of Minnesota. Did I get that right? That's yeah. I, that's, that's quite a business card. You have to have two business cards. Yeah. With that. Uh, thanks so much, Mike. Thank you. Here. Appreciate it.